Good evening. It's great to have you with us today. Um, friends at home, great, thankful and grateful that you are joining us in our virtual worship once again this week. Everything you need to know will be projected for you um, behind me here on our wall. Um, we are not celebrating communion um, this week, just so you know that. Then we also are continuing our teaching series on the miracles of, of Jesus. So I'm excited for that as we look at a miracle from Mark chapter 4. Um, we'll have our children's message for us. And yeah, I think that's it for our service notes. So I pray that God bless each of you as you worship him this day. I invite you to stand now as we begin our worship service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, O Lord, I call. My rock, be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands towards your most holy sanctuary, it's been a week, right? Another week in 2020, and so that means we have this opportunity once again to go before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and take some time silently to confess all those sins we know and those sins we don't know unto Him. I invite you to join me now as we do that. And then now together we cry out to our Lord, Father of mercy, we confess that we are not the people you created us to be. We confess that we are by nature sinners and in rebellion against your will. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the things we have done wrong and the good we have failed to do. We have sinned against each other and broken the bonds of fellowship. Forgive us of our sins, remove the evil from our hearts and minds, and teach us to follow you with willing hearts. Now friends, through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus our Savior, you have been made the children of God and received his mercy. Therefore, as a call and ordained servant of the word, I announce God's grace to you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just please be seated for our first reading. First reading today comes from Job, the 38th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines his measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Or what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud ways be stayed? This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand now for the reading of our Holy Gospel. This week's Gospel from Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 35. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, 
Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated now for our children's message. Welcome, children. Welcome to the game show that is gripping churches all over the United States. This game show is entitled, hold on, Scary or Not Scary. Ooh, okay, excellent, excellent. Way to play along, okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna ask you to raise your hand. Now, we're not Baptist, we're not Pentecostal, so we're gonna raise our hand the Lutheran way. We're gonna go like this, okay? So, here's, here, here's the first thing. I'm gonna show you a picture. You can tell me if you think it's scary or not scary. Scary if you raise, raise your hand, okay? Here we go. First picture. Bunnies, scary or not scary? We have a p- couple people that think bunnies are scary. That's all right. This is a judgment-free zone here. All right. All right. How about this one? Darkness, scary or not scary? All right. A few people. All right. I remember I was always scared. I'm still scared of the dark sometimes. How about this one? A fly, scary or not scary? <laughs> yeah. Certainly annoying, but, but sometimes we're not, not, we're not scared of them. Okay, how about this one? I remember this was a, an arch nemesis for me. A diving board. Yep, yep. There's a few people that think a diving board is scary. How about this one? Bad dreams. Scary. Yep, there's a few people there too. All right. How about this one? I don't think Pastor's going to raise his hand for this one. How about this one? Giving a speech. Scary? Not scary? No? (laughs) All right. How about this one? Lions running at you. All right. Almost unanimous. Lions running at us is scary. How about this one is more for you adults? How about you get one of these? All right. Everyone. Yeah, all the adults. This is a selected for audit letter from the IRS, okay? You, some of you adults are probably like, I'll take the lions on, really. I'm not, not touching that one. All right, last one here. Storms. Scary or not scary? We just had one outside, right? And that one seemed to pass without too many issues. Well, this, this little game is, is, is kind of fun to play, but... Uh, It reminds me of our Bible lesson for tonight. Our Bible lesson that Pastor just read for us uh, uh, shared with us a a miracle that Jesus did. And and he and his, Jesus and his disciples were on a boat. And suddenly a, a terrible storm came up and the disciples were scared for their lives. Now, when we're scared, many times we're scared because we, we think that something Uh, could hurt us, right? Like jumping off a diving board, or we think something is more powerful than us. And so the disciples were scared because of the storm, and so what did they do? They, They went to Jesus. And what was Jesus doing? He was sleeping. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't sleep very well when I am scared to death. But Jesus, well, Jesus wasn't scared at all. Because he knew that he was more powerful than the storm. And what did he do? He showed us just a few verses later that he calmed the storm just by saying, Be quiet, storm. And the storm quieted. This this story reminds us that Jesus is with us, even in the middle of our storms. But it also reminds us that Jesus is more powerful than any scary storm or any scary thing that we might have happen in our lives. We can go to Jesus, we can pray to Jesus, and he will be with us, and he will listen to us. So let's go ahead and thank Jesus for being that all-powerful, all-present God in our life. And we encourage you to to say the prayer uh, after me. Dear Jesus... 
Thanks for loving me. When I'm scared or nervous, help me to remember that you are with me and you are more powerful than any scary thing I might face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for being part of our children's message. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for your presence once again. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here and with us this day as we come to you to worship you. Father, we pray that Spirit come into the depths of our hearts and our minds at this moment. Into minds so that I can deliver these your words in the way that you want them to go out to these your people. And may that Spirit work in their hearts and minds that they may feel you, that they may hear you, that they may understand your presence is with them throughout this time and all times. And Father, we humbly ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the other day, I was here at the church, and I was working on my message for, for tonight and tomorrow. And Grady got dropped off here. Uh, Lauren had a few errands to run, and he needed to socially distance himself from his three sisters for a little while. <laughs> so he brought a ball, and by the time the ball fun ended about 20 minutes later, um, he worked his way to my office and began chatting with me. So we were just chatting about um, the message for today, and then one of our quilters pulled up, and she looked like she needed a little help, so I ran outside to help her bring some stuff into the basement so she could, so she could quilt for the day. And then when I came back up into my office, Grady was in my chair and on my Chromebook. I said, well, what are you doing, Grady? And, and he didn't say much. He kind of hooted and hawed a little bit. And, and then I said, well, you know, if you really want to do something on my Chromebook, why don't you go ahead and write some of my message? So he did. <laughs> he read the starts, uh, the two or three starts that I had already put together. And he came up with something on his own. And it was good. So I decided I would use it today. I decided I would use it today to get us into week four of the Miracles of Jesus teaching series. If you're interested in following along, if you brought your Bible or you have your phone with you, go ahead and head to Mark 4, chapter 35, through verse 41. Now these sentences that I'm going to share with you are from Grady. He's very nervous right now back there. And he did a fine job of modernizing the miracle of Jesus that we're going to look at today. So you ready for this? Here it goes. This is uh, my son Grady, 12-year-old, 7th grader. He wrote this. My son wrote this introduction. My name is Pastor and I'm here to say Jesus was preaching all that day. So Jesus laid down to sleep while his disciples began to weep. They were terrified of the loud typhoon. They woke up Jesus very soon. So Jesus woke up and made the sea tame. He said to the disciples, why are you always so lame? You always see what I achieve, yet you still do not believe. Even though I perform miracles to the power of eight, I owe you disciples, you have little faith. Right? And I said, well, you've got about 22 more minutes to go. Do you want to keep going? <laughs> no, that's great, Grady. But let's break this down a little bit further. So right before this miracle that, that Jesus um, performs, he's been, been teaching. And his teaching had been taking place on a boat. 
You see, he was already on, on the sea, the, the land, the, the sand around the Sea of Galilee, but so many people have now surrounded him that he asked the disciples to, to get in the boat with him and push off into the water so they could have the ability to teach and see the masses that surround him. And so he sits down in the boat and he teaches them. He, he teaches them parables about seed and sowing the seed. And I can tell you this, for those of us who are not afraid of, of speaking in front of people, and, and those of us who do it a lot, it's exhausting. After speaking, after teaching, for any length of time, you are exhausted. Complete exhaustion in some cases. And I think that's what we see with Jesus here tonight. So as he was in the boat, after he had finished all this teaching and all this explaining of his teaching to his disciples, he said, all right, boys, it's time that we go across the sea. So they started across the sea, and Jesus was just as he was. Those are the words that, that Mark used. And those, those intrigued me a little bit, so I dug a little bit more. Just as he was. Well, what, how was Jesus? So he was seated, right? So just as he was seated, they pushed off now further into the sea. And so exhausted from his teaching, what does Jesus do? He gets his Sunday afternoon nap. He takes a sleep, right? And as they make their way across the Sea of Galilee. Now, now here's the thing. As they were headed across the sea, a great windstorm suddenly arose. Out of nowhere, this cyclone came whipping down and around them. Here's how it happened. Some 700 feet below on the Sea of Galilee, with Mount Hermon in view only 30 miles to the northeast, this lilop formed. It's a unique use of the Greek word for storm. And what a lilop is, it's a cyclone of wind that suddenly appears as westerly winds come whipping off of Mount Hermon, colliding with the warm air of the Sea of Galilee. So now, all around these disciples, all around them in their boat, wind and waves. And, and these aren't just some new fishermen, right? These are experienced fishermen that are struggling to keep the boat afloat. The scriptures tell us that waves are already filling the boat. And, and friends, if water is coming into the boat, what were some of those disciples probably doing? Throwing the water back out of the boat, right? And the other half were doing what? Oh, they're, they're probably trying to get the, the, the boat ready to hit that next wave so they don't get tipped. And they probably all were thinking together, how in the world is this guy sleeping? How in the world is he sleeping? For, for where they see him in the stern, he's still on that cushion, asleep. And, and when you're asleep, you are what? You're peaceful. You're, you're at, at rest. So with Jesus asleep on the cushion, this is a complete contrast to the wind and the waves and the frightened disciples around him. So what do the disciples end up doing? Well, they end up crying out to one another above the wind, Wake him up! Wake up the teacher! So the one disciple probably closest to him goes over and wakes Jesus up and, and says, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Modern words. Dude, why in the world are you sleeping? Can't you see that we're about to die out here? Don't you care at all? And then what happens next? What happens next is we see both the humanity and deity of Jesus revealed. Humanity, right? He's sleeping, and so he wakes up. Ugh. Human thing to do. And then half asleep... Now the Son of God is awake. And in Mark 49, Mark 4, 39, it tells us that this, Jesus woke up. 
He rebuked the wind and he spoke to the sea. Peace. Be still. And there was. There was exactly that. No more wind. No more waves. Calmness. Serenity. All around. Just like nothing ever happened. Remarkable, isn't it? Instantly and completely, now on the Sea of Galilee, there is silence. All the screams of terror have now stopped. What do we learn? The power of Jesus Christ brings peace. He commands it, and the chaos is transformed into calmness. In an instant, friends, everything has changed. Everything was changed, and not just for the disciples, right? Do you remember what verse 36 says? Mark told us that there were other boats with them. So for all those on the water, calmness. While the disciples were the ones that cry out for help, what Jesus did affected those in the boats around them as well. Over that entire sea, the entire fleet of boats that had been traveling with Jesus, with the disciples, equally affected by the storm, now too are surrounded with complete stillness and silence. Can you see it? Can you see the picture? Can you see their faces? The mouths of the disciples and everyone around them, mouths hanging wide open, one moment screaming, and now mouths open in utter disbelief. And then Jesus speaks to them. No longer to the creation, no longer to the wind and to the waves. He speaks to them. Them being the disciples, and yes, those around the disciples in the other boats too, who could probably hear just as clear, because what else is going on right now? Nothing. Complete silence. Jesus says, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And friends, those words, those are the words where we need to spend a little bit more time. The disciples and those with the disciples in those surrounding boats were just taught by Jesus only a few hours ago. And while Jesus was teaching them, he assured those 12 and he assured those around them that the secret of the kingdom was theirs. Mark 4.10 tells us this. When he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But, but the disciples still didn't get it, right? So we see in verse 41, they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? And now, friends, this is where we answer that question going through your mind. So what? <laughs> Great story, cool miracle, but how does this connect to me? Why should I even care about this miracle that Jesus did? Here's why. It's because we are like the disciples on the boat. We just are. Whether you are an unbeliever, or used to be a believer, or just starting to be a believer, or a fervent believer in Jesus, each of us from time to time are like those disciples on the boat. We are afraid. 
We're afraid that Jesus doesn't care. We're afraid that Jesus doesn't care that we are struggling amidst the storms. We think that he is asleep. So what do we do from time to time? Oh, I know what we do. We Google it. We look to find other answers. Because we fear the unknown. When we're no longer able to be in control, fear grips us. So we push, we pull, we try to gain control. We tell ourselves to pull our bootstraps up and fight through this storm. We can do it. We can change the direction that we're headed. But in reality, what's going on? No matter how hard we try, no matter how much we do ourselves, we can't win. We can't overcome the sudden storm. We can't overcome those prolonged, whipping winds. We're like the disciples, filled with fear and struggling with little faith. Because, I know, right, if Jesus was actually God, he wouldn't allow for this stuff to happen to me. If God really loved this world, he would end this pandemic today, right now. If he loved me and he was for me, he would answer my prayers. We all from time to time cry out, Teacher, don't you care? Friends, I'm here to tell you right now, the answer is yes. Yes, he cares. Yes, Jesus cares for you. Jesus cares for each of you right now. Amidst the storms, amidst the uncertainty you are facing, amidst the struggles and the hurts, Jesus cares. I know. I, I do. I, I know sometimes it feels like you're crying out to a sleeping Jesus. It feels like he's not aware of how much you're struggling, how much you're hurting. It appears he hasn't comprehended yet the danger that you are in. It may seem that he hasn't realized how desperate you are and how overwhelmed you feel. He even knows that you feel like you're stuck out at sea all alone. But Jesus never sleeps. Jesus never sleeps. One of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 121, tells us just that in verses 3 and 4, where it says, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Friends, Jesus is in the boat with you. His presence is assured. So tonight, today, if you're watching this at home, I invite you to soften your heart to let down your guard and let the Holy Spirit assure you that Christ is with you. For the Bible tells us so. It constantly, continually reassures us that Jesus is present and that He is with us always, even to the end of the age. When we have Jesus in our hearts, when, when we have Jesus in our lives, we can be at peace and rest in His comfort, His love, 
even amidst the storms of this life. You know why? Because he has power over it all. His words of love, his words of grace, his words of forgiveness change chaos into calmness. This is powerful. Friends, this is powerful because only he, only Jesus has complete control. Only he has the power to change. Only he has the power to save. Only he can rescue you and me and bring us peace. And then, and then what Jesus does in us, this should affect the people around us. The Prince of Peace that gives us this gift of peace will affect all those around us as we live with his peace, as we live with his love, as we live with his grace in our lives. Every day, every day, friends, not only do we have the opportunity to trust in Jesus amidst the storms, but we have that opportunity to carry that gift of peace to the other boats around us. For we know the Lord is the peace amidst the storm. So today, Today, Lord, we ask that you help us to trust in your presence and your power. Lord, today we ask you to use us to be a carrier of your peace and your love. Lord, today we ask you to use us by the power of your Holy Spirit to transform the atmosphere around us, knowing that you are Lord. And as Lord of all, by the power of your Spirit, we humbly seek your transforming power in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts, our minds amidst the storm focused on the true peace and the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to invite you to stand now and join me as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you now to join me as we go to our Lord in a time of prayer. Today as we go to our Lord in prayer, we're going to be lifting up um, our first communion students for our 1030 service tomorrow, as well as um, two young people, Kate and Finn Bylander, who will be baptized at that service as well. We also are lifting up in prayer um, Lee Nelson and his uh, family um, at the passing of his brother Eldon um, this past week. Most gracious God and Father, you are the giver of all good things. We thank you especially for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the sacrificial lamb for us and all humankind. He willingly took our sins upon his back and won for us eternal freedom 
and victory in heaven with you. For such a great gift, Father, we say thank you. And Almighty God, what Jesus did, we cannot do. He resisted the temptations of the devil and lived a perfect sinless life for us. We ask that you would graciously deliver us from evil and protect each of us from the attacks of the evil one and that he would have no power over us. Loving Lord, you are always at work. Fill each of us with your Holy Spirit, with courage and confidence to step out and join you on your mission. Always remind us that you have done the heavy lifting, the dying and the rising, and now empower us to cast fear aside and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Healing Father, you and you alone have the ability to heal all manner of diseases. We ask that you continue to be with those who, all those who suffer from illness and pain. We especially lift up to you this day, Gary and Sam, Melissa and Logan, Irv and Mary, Paul, John, Larry, and Susan. Grant them patience, dear Father, and restore each of them to health according to your good and gracious will. Father, we thank you for the life that your Son, Jesus Christ, gave his life to give new life to all those who believe in you. This day, we pray for Lee Nelson and his entire family at the loss of his brother, Eldon, after 93 amazing years. Father, fill them up with that truth and that grace that for Eldon and all people, your son, Jesus Christ, defeated sin and Satan and death and won for all who believe everlasting life. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you so much that you have taught us what you would have us believe and do. We thank you this weekend for leading Kate and Finn Bylander to the waters of holy baptism. We praise and thank you for helping Addie, Brody, Kate, and Merrick grow in their faith and leading them to receiving your body and blood in holy communion. So, dear Father, in the days ahead, we ask that you help them and help us by your Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ to live out our lives no matter the cost, honoring you above all things. Help us all to hold fast to your word and hearts that you have cleansed so that we may be made strong in faith, perfect in holiness, and be comforted in both life and death. And Almighty God, we commit ourselves and all for whom we pray to your fatherly care and benediction. Be gracious to us and defend us by your power. Direct us by your spirit that we may daily grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior until each of us shall stand before you in the joy of everlasting glory. We pray all this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until with all your saints we inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, receive this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship today. Just a couple quick announcements. Um, next week, um, we finish up our Miracles of Jesus teaching series. And one more time, um, we'd love to have you prayerfully consider supporting our tools for school drive. It's gone really well. Um, we're so thankful for, for all your commitment to that and to just so much. You truly are a blessing. You have been and continue to be as we continue to push forward, knowing that amidst the storm, 
um, that we're facing still, Christ goes with us and before us as we join him daily on his mission. So thank you for joining us in worship. God's richest blessings to you if you're visiting. I know some of you are. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to have you come back and worship Jesus Christ with us again. Our usher, Dale, will let you out from the back to the front. God's blessings, friends.